Let's get started with Google Chat and Google Meet. Don't forget that all resources for today's session can be located at bit.ly forward slash path to GC1. Um, every time we have a session during this Google Path to Certification, we add a new slide to this deck. This could become your study guide as you prepare to take the exam. Let's start with Google Chat. To get there, I can follow the same pattern as other Google tools and type in chat.google.com in the Omnibox, or I can access chat from the Waffle. Chat is for real-time communication. You can use chat through Gmail, an app or an extension, or through the web like this. You can use this to remind students of upcoming deadlines, um, or as a back channel during teacher-led instruction, or even to communicate with your colleagues. In the top left-hand corner, I would click on Find People, Room, or Bots. Um, I can enter someone's name or email address. This does work with Fayette County's directory, and even if they don't have Google Chat turned on, I can search for them. Once I find the person, I can go ahead and start to type my chat. Notice I can do a couple of different things at the bottom. I can um, upload a file from my computer. I could attach a document from my Google Drive. I could start a Hangout um, or a video meeting, a Meet. And I could even add a Bitmoji or an emoji. This is an example of a direct message, meaning it's between myself and one other person. So now this message or this chat remains private. If I click send, the message has been delivered. And Paula will see this message as soon as she logs in. It's easy to set notifications in chat. For the very first time, you will see this message at the top that allows you to turn on desktop notifications. You can also access notifications by clicking on the cog or the settings wheel and change your settings for how you wish to be notified if someone change or if someone shoots you a message through chat. So that was a direct message. Let's say I want to um, create a group message. Again, click on find person room or bot in the left hand corner and this time choose group message. Again, search for the people you wish to add. I'll add Paula and Jerry since they're used to me sending them crazy messages all throughout the day. Click message. And again, I can add attachments, things from my drive. I could even start a meet so that we could have a video meeting or add, bitmoji, <laughs> add emojis. With chat, you can meet and brainstorm ideas with your teams in different rooms. If I click on create a room, and maybe I want this to be our upcoming IFL event. And now I can even add people to this, uh, to this room. These rooms come in handy because while you can send a direct message to someone outside of your organization, you cannot create a group direct message with them. So if you want to chat with external guests in a group, you have to create a room. Another great feature of rooms is that you can add different threads. And then your attendees can reply to the different threads. So it organizes your conversations within a group chat. All of my chats stay over on the left hand side unless I choose to get rid of them. For example, I can choose the three dots at the end of the person's name and I can turn off notifications for that chat, add a star if I want to find it easily. I can block this person. I can either hide the conversation or delete it. 
if you hide the conversation, it just archives it. So it takes it off of my main stream, stream, but I can go back and find it later. If I delete the conversation, it does permanently delete it for me. Note that um, in this case, Rachel would have to delete her own chat for it to completely disappear. We are going to skip over bots for this level one session. Let's jump over to Google Meet. Again, I could come to the Omnibox and either type in meet.google.com or I can access Meet from my Waffle where all of my other Google apps live. So there are times when we really just need to talk. Um, we need more than just an email or a text message. We need to be able to see each other's faces and hear each other's voices. We need that human interaction, um, especially now during these crazy times. So this is when Google Meet comes in especially handy. Meet gives you the power to have video calls with anyone and anywhere. As a matter of fact, you can have up to 250 different people in the same video call. You might want to use Meet to play in with other teachers who live across town. And so we can't just walk next door to each other's classrooms, but we can still meet together and plan. Or you may need to meet with a parent um, of a struggling student or a parent to praise a student who has been excelling at their online work. Maybe you want to teach your students face to face and we can't meet inside of our classrooms right now. So meet is a great solution. Think about how you can connect your students with other classes or even invite experts, um, speakers into your rooms or take your students on a virtual field trip. Uh, maybe you want to have office hours for students to jump in as they need help with an assignment. Meet has so many different possibilities. There are several different ways that you can start and share a Google Meet. I'm going to begin today by clicking join or start a meeting. And you will need to give this a nickname. I'm going to call mine Testing 101. This is a unique code for this specific meet so that I can keep it safe and secure with my students. Click continue. Please note by using this nickname, you should be the first one to join your meet. That means your students cannot join without you. So once you're here, students then would be able to join. So from here, I'm going to click join now. and I'm going to mute my microphone so it doesn't interfere with our recording. Okay, um, so you, you saw the pop-up information a second ago about the joining information. If you need to find that again, you will click on this drop-down menu in the bottom left-hand corner. And so now I'm getting those details again. I'm seeing my nickname so that I can share that with others. Note that this nickname can only be used within Fayette County Public Schools. If someone from outside of that or outside of our district tries to join, you would have to manually approve them. Um, this is the joining link. So this is the URL that you would share with your students or your colleagues so that they know how to join. So you could send that through an email, post it in an, an um, I see an Infinite Campus Blast or if you're using Remind. So any way that you're sharing information with your students. Um, notice there's also a dial-in number for those who do not have access to a computer. Notice you can also uh, um, add calendar attachments. Um, we'll look at that in just a second and those would appear here. A couple of things about the Meet interface. Um, at the bottom, you can see where I can mute my microphone, I could turn my camera on and off, and I could also hang up this call. I can also turn on closed captions, and this works per user. So if I click it, you're not going to see anything up here now, or maybe you, hopefully you will see it through my screen sharing. Um, I have turned on my closed captioning, and with my microphone on, you can now see that when I speak, my words are displayed at the bottom of the screen. So this is a great accessibility feature. Um, and again, you would need to remind your students to turn that on if um, needed. I can also present my screen from here. This is great to share with your students. Notice I can print, um, sorry, present my entire screen. And that's a great choice if you're going to be flipping around different um, through different tabs. 
I can present just window, one window. This is great if you're using multiple screens as I'm doing now. So which window do you want to share? I could also um, pre present a specific Chrome tab. This is what you will need to use if you want to show a video or um, something with sound or animation. Um, when you do present, it will again ask you which screen are you wanting to present. And you'll get a little pop-up that tells you you are presenting to everyone. So now as I flip through my tabs, I can tell what I am sharing with everyone. Um, when you are finished, you would click Stop Presenting and it would go back to normal. A couple other things at the top. Notice that you will have the grid, we do have the grid extension installed. So this lets you show all of your participants at one time. And just take a second to note the different features that you have. Um, you can show so that it highlights speakers. It will make whoever is speaking larger. You could show only participants with their video turned on. The next icon shows me the participants I have in my classroom. So if I had other people in my call, I would see them here. And then as the, um, as the creator of this meet, I would have the ability to mute um, each participant or actually remove each participant from this meet. There's also a chat feature. So encourage your students to use this for back channeling. Um, they can often ask questions as you are teaching and other students would be able to answer. One last feature to note, um, let's look at the bottom right hand corner. We have our three dots or our ellipses or as our students call this, the snowman. Some other options we have here. Um, we can change the layout of the screen, display full screen, turn off captioning, you have different settings. This is handy if you need to check your microphone or your camera. Um, you have also different options. Um, you could also record the meet. This is a premium feature that we will not have access to um, throughout the summer. So use that while you can. Um, it's a great feature. It actually records your meeting and saves it directly into your Google Drive in a folder automatically created for you called um, Meet Recordings. Another way that you can start a Google Meet is through Google Calendar. So when I go to create a new event, um, I can give it a title. And just reviewing quickly the other options that we covered in a previous session, you can um, choose out of office, you could choose your um, hours. When do you want this meeting to take place? Maybe it's today from one to, until two. I could add guests from here. You don't have to, um, but this is what I wanted to show you. Add Google Meet video conferencing. When I click, it automatically gives me this, um, the code, so the Google Meet that I would then share with my students. If I came up and copied or added my guests from a list here, they would get this invitation on their Google Calendar as well. Um, you could even show them how to set up their own notifications so they get a reminder when it's time for the meet to begin. Um, the other powerful things about, I want you really to think through how you can mesh all of these Google tools together. So I can add notifications, like we mentioned. I can even add attachments to my Google um, Calendar um, event here. So maybe I wanted to add an agenda that I had already created in my Google Drive. So maybe a Google Doc or a Google Slide Deck that we will all need during that meeting. Um, so I could attach it from here and have everything in one place. So if I save that, it will now populate on my calendar. Here it is, math review. So when it's time, 10 minutes before, I'll get a notification. I would open it and I could join the meet from here. Another place that I can start a Google Meet. Don't you love how there are so many things, um, so many ways to accomplish the same goal? As I could do this through my Gmail. Since we don't use Gmail in Fayette County, I am pulling up a personal account. So note, you cannot do this with Fayette County email address, but you can do it through a personal Gmail account. Um, so my over on my left hand side, you see the Hangout or the Meet icon right here. So when I hover, it's there. See it? The little exclamation marks above my image. 
when I hover, it does give me the ability to chat. So if I want to start a new chat or meet, I do it from here, start a new conversation. I can pick someone that I've um, recently chatted with, or I could type someone new and it would populate. So notice this is the same as chat. It's just letting us do it from with inside of Gmail. If I wanted to add someone and to create a group chat, I could do that from here, or I could even turn this into a video meet. And although the next one is not yet on um, required for the Google certification level one, I did want to show you a very useful feature in the recommended practice um, for using Meet within Fayette County with our students. And that's from with inside a Google Classroom. You would need to open up each Google Classroom. And for the first time, you will see um, in the banner where under the class code, it says Meet link. And you can generate a Meet link directly from inside this class. So when I click on this for the first time, I am going to go ahead and hit generate meet link. And this is a safe way to generate a meet link. It's just like giving it a nickname, meaning you as the teacher would be the one that needs to start it. When the students start or try to join before you, it gives them a wait to screen. Um, it also means that when you leave, it's just like closing the classroom door and turning off the lights you um, would want all of your students to leave first and then you be the last one to close the door and they should not be able to rejoin without you. Um, we have a previous training on this using Google Meet in Classroom. Um, if you want to open that up, you can actually see that demonstrated from the teacher side and the student side. Okay, so once I'm here, I see my link has been generated, so I could copy this. So maybe you wanted to invite a co-teacher, someone who's not in this classroom, or a guest so you have the ability to copy it from here and share it right now this link is visible to students so if I click on save here it is it's in the banner of that classroom so when my students come in now I can even just make an announcement we're gonna to meet tomorrow on Tuesday at 10 o'clock they would come back to classroom and they could join it from here um, so to make this even more secure, you can come up to your classroom settings and scroll down to where it says meet under general. And when I'm not using this with students, I turn it off um, and then click save. And so they don't see after this is saved, um, they will not see that link there any longer. I can see it as a teacher, but I can see this little eyeball with the cross is showing me the link is not currently visible to students. So I just wanted to make you aware of that feature. So we have now covered um, all of our basics for level one using chat and meet. Um, please don't forget to refer back to this slide deck and the bit.ly is showing again on the screen and there will be practice tasks for you to walk through and complete. The best way to learn these tools is to practice and to utilize them with your students. They will um, make your life and your students life a lot easier. So remember that meet and chat allow for real time communication. Thanks so much for joining. If you have any questions, please pop those in the chat box. Um, and you are also welcome to email um, myself or my team members at any time.